What's the one key trait that every manager, whether you're new or experienced, needs to possess in order to be successful? Well, I'm going to share it in this episode. Hi, and welcome to another episode of You're in Charge, Now What? I'm your host, Glenn Pash, and the goal of this channel is to help those of you that now find yourself in charge of a team, a division, a project, or even a business, build the skills necessary to lead high-performing teams. Each week, I'm going to focus on one topic. I'm going to share some tips and strategies that have helped me build my businesses so that you can generate consistent results from your teams. So, let's dive into today's topic. This is the premiere episode of this channel, and so I thought we should start with what I think is the most important trait that a manager possesses. There's been debate through my career uh, when I share and talk with other leaders and industries what that trait really is. But in all my time of leading teams and working for people or for businesses that I own or I'm partners with, the one thing that always seems to be there when I look back and say that's a successful team or I was successful or what was missing when I wasn't successful would be a coach's mentality. Now, what do I mean by a coach's mentality? Well, if you think of sports teams or you think of a coach that had an impact on you if you played sports, be it high school or college, or if you didn't play sports, let's say there was a teacher that had an impact on you. If you take a moment and just think about what they did to have that impact, to make you feel that certain way, I will bet anything that if we really wrote all of those aspects down, part of it would be that they had some patience, they listened, they pushed you. Notice they probably weren't easy on you. They probably didn't make it, uh, let you get away with things. But they pushed you to what they believed you could get to, but they were supportive, clear, specific. So all of these uh, other skills or or sub skills, I would say, and we'll go over them in future episodes, I think it wraps around the most successful people, the most successful team leaders are those that approach it as a coaching mentality. Now, you may say, Glenn, I work in sales, or I work in customer service, or I work in a marketing company, as as I am right now. I'm the CEO of a, of a marketing company. You say, well, how can I? I'm not coaching. We're not playing sports, but you are delivering a product. You're approaching your work every single day. You're you're executing tasks. So if you're the leader, you have to be very clear on what you expect from your team in order to generate the results you want, what behaviors, what actions they have to do. And then you're watching them. They're playing their version of a game. Your job is to watch them. So I want to give you a little exercise that will help clarify what I mean. Now, if you happen to be listening to this Uh, audio podcast uh, version of this uh, episode, or maybe you're working out and you're watching it on video while you're on the treadmill or you're on the elliptical machine, as I often do. I watch uh, a lot of podcasts while I'm working out. Um, Don't stop. You can do this exercise later. But if you are just watching this uh, and you have the ability to do this, please just once I get you started, just pause, execute, and then come back and we can finish up. So What I'd like you to do is take a piece of paper and I'd like you to basically draw a line down the middle and on one side I want you to put good, other side I want you to put bad. Now, I want you to go back and think of that coach or a teacher or maybe you worked for someone that you really liked working for and they made you look forward to coming to work and you liked it and you learned a lot and you felt that they were helping you get better. I want you to write down all of the things that they did, not what they said. What did they do? What did they do to make you feel that way? That's why they resonated with you. That's why they connected with you because they did. Their actions had an impact on you and you felt it 
and it created an emotion in you, and that's why you connected with that leader, that coach. So again, think about what they did. Think about when you when you say coach, where were they when you were practicing? They were watching you from the sidelines. Maybe they were out there right next to you. Maybe your coach, I, I worked in kitchens for a long time, and there was a, a gentleman who was a great mentor to me. He would watch me as I'm cooking, or he would watch me as I'm out bartending or waiting tables or organizing. He was constantly watching and giving me tips, so he was always involved in what I was doing. So as you write these things down, you know, pause this, go down, write these things down. I want you to think again of actions. Now, once you've completed that on the bad side, you might know where I'm going. I want you to think of all of the coaches, teachers, people you work for, people you worked with, who had a different impact on you. You didn't like going to that job, but you had to. You didn't like going to that class, but you had to. Or you were playing and you just didn't connect with a coach. Again, what did they do? Actions cause results. So it's not about words. It's not about what they're saying because a lot of times poor managers or people who are not great leaders say one thing and do another thing and it's confusing to the team. So I want you to write down. Now this list may come faster, easier, and maybe longer than the good list, but that's okay. I want you to write those down again. Pause this, or if you're driving or you're listening, just think about a couple people. Think about things that they did so it resonates in your mind. Now, once we have this list, I want you to look at it. Now, either you're new going into leading a team or running the project or taking over a business or you're experienced. Either way, I want you to look at the bad list. And I want you to say to yourself, do you ever do any of those? You may not realize you're doing it. Or maybe not exactly, but it could be a version of that. Maybe what bothered you from one of your previous managers were they never listened to you. They would always blow, you know, blow off or discount your feedback. Or they never took responsibility. It was always our fault when we lost and their success, not ours. Maybe there's things that you're doing or saying or some of your actions that maybe not exactly that, maybe there's a version of that. I want you to be aware of that because we need to change that behavior. The key is, if you're, if it bothered you, it's going to bother your team. You're no different than your team. I know we like to think we are now that we're managers or we're leaders, we're different. You have different skills right now, you have a different role to play, but if it bothered you, it's going to bother your team. Now, so look through that. Now on the flip side, look at the good list and say to yourself, how many of these do I do? Or if I'm not doing any of these or some of these, what could I do to implement some of these into my interactions with my team? Maybe that coach explained things very clearly to me. Maybe this coach or this teacher demonstrated things for me so that I could see what they wanted me to do. All of these things, they had an impact on you. Again, if it worked for you, it's probably going to work for a lot of your team. So start implementing this. I would probably also recommend keeping this list in a location where maybe monthly or quarterly, you look at that list and make sure that you're not drifting over out of emotion, out of frustration into the negative, or we're just skipping some of the positives. We want to make sure that we're adding them in. So that's your one exercise. Now, as I said, every week we're going to add tools into the toolbox, and that's one of your tools. But here's another tool into your toolbox. It's a thought that I want you to keep very, very present in your mind as you assume a role of a leader. One of the best pieces of advice I ever received, I was an actor for about 12 years, and I remember working on a play, and things were just not working for me. It just didn't click for me. And the director took me aside and said, you are so worried about what everyone else is doing. You're so worried if the audience is going to like you that you're taking yourself out of the play. You're not worried about the audience. You're worried about yourself. You're in your own head. He said, and this is, this is what I want you to remember, as soon as you step on this stage, it's no longer about you, it's about the audience. I, as an audience member, don't care how you feel. 
I care about how you make me feel. And that I've kept with me through all of my leadership roles and management roles. Sometimes I've been more successful at it than others. Sometimes I've gotten cocky and thought I had it all together and I was so smart and so good. And that usually led to me not paying attention to what was good, getting so wrapped up in how great I was, I forgot about the team. And as I've joked, I've taken you know, mediocre teams and made them really successful. And I've taken some really successful teams and made them mediocre as well. So in this tool for you, this wrapper over top of the whole episode. When you are leading, it's about your team. You have roles to do. You have your tasks to do. They have their place, right? If you go back to think about a, a, a football coach, a basketball coach, they're not out playing the game. They're directing. They're leading. They're motivating. They're pushing. They're setting the example of what they expect from their team, but they're not out doing it. So the same thing for you. It's not about you. You have your role. It's about your team being there to coach them, being there to make sure they're effective, making sure they're executing on their tasks in order to generate results. Now, in some future episodes, we're going to discuss how do you coach your team? I have a, a, an eight-step coaching process. We're also going to be talking about what happens when you get results or when you don't get results, what you're going to do. I'm going to give you all these tools, but today I just wanted to start out on the very premiere episode to understand what's the one piece, one most important tool I think great leaders have and need, and that's that coaching mentality. It's not about them. They're leading their team. They're pushing their team, but it's about the team, not them. So... I hope you found that valuable. If you did, please push the uh, or click the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. This way you'll get notified each week as I post new episodes. Uh, please use the comments. I'd love to hear what you like, what you don't like. If there's a situation that you would like me to comment on, or maybe there's a topic you would like me to cover, I'd be more than happy to do that. As always, I'm here to help. That's the purpose of this. So please share this out with your network. I'm sure there are other people in this same position that are not getting this type of training and are looking for this type of feedback. So my goal is to try to be your coach as well. So as always, thank you so much uh, for your focus, your appreciation. And as I say at the end of every episode, you're in charge, but now you have a new tool to help you become more successful. Thanks so much. Have a great day.